reminding of Al-Quran, Surah 5-3, we start here with a quote from Baha'u'llah. This is the day in which the testimony of the Lord hath been fulfilled, the day in which the word of God hath been made manifest, and his evidence firmly established. His voice is calling you unto that which shall profit you, and enjoineth you to observe that which shall draw you nigh unto God, the Lord of Revelation. And the Kitab e Iqan, the Book of Certitude, by Baha'u'llah, is translated by Shoghi Effendi in 1931. And his quote that he starts this off with is, This is one more attempt to introduce to the West in a language, however inadequate, this book of unsurpassed preeminence among the writings of the author of the Baha'i Revelation. The hope is that it may assist others in their efforts to approach what must always be regarded as the unattainable goal of a fitting rendering of Baha'u'llah's matchless utterance. And could we say that the uh, Charismatics Pentecostals and the uh, Anabaptists, on the other hand, made the uh, Baha'i movement possible? Maybe, maybe not. There's been, it's one of several groups that have branched off of Islam. In the name of our Lord, the exalted, the Most High, no man shall attain the shores of the ocean of true understanding, except he be detached from all that is in heaven and on earth. Sanctify your souls, O ye peoples of the world, that haply ye may attain that station which God hath destined for you, and enter thus the tabernacle which according to the dispensations of providence, hath been raised in the firmament of the Bayon. The essence of these words is this, that they that tread the path of faith, they that thirst for the wine of certitude, must cleanse themselves of all that is earthly, their ears from idle talk, their minds from vain imaginings, their hearts from worldly affections, their eyes from that which perisheth. They should put their trust in God, and holding fast unto him, follow in his way. Then will they be made worthy of the effulgent glories of the Son, a divine knowledge and understanding, and become the recipients of grace that is infinite and unseen, inasmuch as man can never hope to attain unto the knowledge of the all-glorious, can never quaff from the stream of divine knowledge and wisdom, and can never enter the abode of immortality, nor partake of the cup of divine nearness and favor, unless and until he ceases to regard the words and deeds of mortal men as a standard for the true understanding and recognition of God and his prophets. Consider the past. How many, both high and low, have at all times yearningly awaited the advent of the manifestations of God in the sanctified persons of its chosen ones? How often have they expected his coming? Hopefully not like that. Um, how frequently have they prayed that the breeze of divine mercy might blow and the promised beauty step forth from behind the veil of concealment? and be made manifest to all the world. And whensoever the portals of grace did open, and the clouds of divine bounty did rain upon mankind, and the light of the unseen did shine above the horizon of celestial might, they all denied him, and turned away from his face, the face of God himself, refer ye to verify this truth, to that which hath been recorded in every sacred book. Ponder for a moment and reflect upon that 
which hath been the cause of such denial on the part of those who have searched with such earnestness and longing. Their attack hath been more fierce than tongue or pen can describe. Not one single manifestation of his holiness hath appeared, but he was afflicted by the denials, the repudiation, and the vehement opposition of the people around him. Thus it hath been revealed, O oh, the mystery, O oh, the misery of men. No messenger hath come unto them, but they laugh at him to scorn. Again he saith, Each nation hath plotted darkly against their messenger to lay violently, violent hold on him, and disputed with vain words to invalidate the truth. In like manner, those words have streamed forth from the source of power and descended from the heaven of glory, are innumerable and beyond the ordinary apprehension of man. Now, no messenger... Okay, so two quotes from the Quran, Surah 36, 30, and 45. A lot of these revelation quotes, uh, uh, claims, are basically... I'm going to do the commentary that God told me to give on this thing. Remember that other book we shared? Um, in like manner, those words have streamed forth from the source of power and descended from the heaven of glory are innumerable and beyond the ordinary comprehension of man. To them that are possessed of true understanding and the insight of the Surah of Hud, you know, Surah 11 of the Quran, surely suffice it, saith, ponder a while those holy words in your heart and with utter detachment strive to grasp their meanings. Remember, the Baha'i movement branched off from Shia Islam, so... Um, ponder a while those holy words in your heart, and with utter detachment strive to grasp their meaning. Examine the wondrous behavior of the prophets, and recall the defamations and denials uttered by the children of negation and falsehood. Perchance, you may cause the bird of the human heart to wing its flight away from the bodes of heedlessness and doubt into the nest of faith and certainty and drink deep from the pure waters of ancient wisdom and partake of the fruit of the tree of divine knowledge. Such is the share of the pure in heart of the bread that hath descended from the realms of eternity and holiness. Should you acquaint yourself with the indignities Heaped upon the prophets of God, and apprehend the true causes of the objections voiced by their oppressors. I think that's far enough. It should be five. You will surely appreciate the significance of their position. Moreover, the more closely you observe the denials of those who have po opposed the manifestations of the divine attributes, and that's what we're supposed to be doing, is we're supposed to be non-abrogated and actually remind people of these things by our mere being. The firmer will be your faith in the cause of God. Accordingly, a brief mention will be made in this tablet of diverse accounts relative to the prophets of God, that they may demonstrate the truth that throughout all ages and centuries, the manifestations of power and glory have been subjected to such heinous cruelties that no pen dare describe them. Perchance this may enable a few to cease to be perturbed by the clamor and protestations of the divines and the foolish of this age, and cause them to strengthen their confidence and certainty. Among the prophets was Noah. For 950 years he prayed. He prayerfully exhorted his people and summoned them to the haven of security and peace. None, however, heeded his call. Each day they inflicted on his blessed person such pain and suffering that no one believed he could survive. How frequently they denied him, and how malevolently they hinted, at their, they hinted their suspicion against him. Thus it hath been revealed, and as often as a company of his people passed by him, they derided him. To them he said, Though ye scoff at us now, we will scoff at you hereafter. Even as you scoff at us, in the end you shall know. And that's derived from Surah 11, 8, 38, you know, from Al Quran. Long afterward, he several times promised victory to his companions and fixed the hour thereof. But when this hour struck, the divine promise was not fulfilled. This 
caused a few among the small number of his followers to turn away from him, and to this testify the records of the best-known books. The, these you must certainly have perused, if not undoubtedly you will. Finally, as stated in books and traditions, there remained with him only forty or seventy-two of his followers. At last, from the depth of his being, he cried aloud, Lord, leave not upon the land a single dweller from among the unbelievers. See Surah 71, Ayat 26 of Al-Quran. And now consider and reflect a moment upon the waywardness of the people. What could have been the reason for such denial and avoidance on their part? What could have induced them to refuse to put off the garment of denial and to adorn themselves with the robe of acceptance? Moreover, what could have caused the non-fulfillment of the divine promise which the seekers, which led the seekers to reject that which they had accepted? Meditate profoundly that the secret of things unseen may be revealed unto you, that you may inhale the sweetness of a spiritual and imperishable fragrance, and that you may acknowledge the truth from that time immemorial, even unto eternity the Almighty hath tried, and will continue to try his servants, so that the light may be distinguished from the darkness, truth from falsehood, right from wrong, guidance from error, happiness from misery, and roses from thorns, even as he hath revealed, do men think, that when they say we believe, they shall be let alone and not without, and not be put to proof. See Surah 29, Ayat 2 of al Quran. And after Noah, the light of the countenance of Hud shone forth above the horizon of creation. For well nigh 700 years, according to the sayings of men, he exhorted the people to turn their faces and draw near unto the Redvan of the Divine Presence, what showers of afflictions rained upon him, until at last his adjurations bore the fruit of increased rebelliousness, and his assiduous endeavors resulted in the willful blindness of his people, and their unbelief shall only increase for the unbelievers their own perdition. See Surah 35, 39 of Al-Quran. And after him there appeared from the Ridvan of the Eternal, the Invisible, the holy person of Saleh, who again summoned the people to the river of everlasting life. For over a hundred years he admonished them to hold fast to the commandments of God and to eschew what is forbidden. His admonitions, however, yielded no fruit, and his pleading proved of no avail. Several times he retired and lived in seclusion. All this, although that eternal beauty was summoning the people to no other than the city of God, even as it is revealed. And unto the tribe of Thamud we sent their brother Saleh. O my people, said he, worship God. Ye have none other than God beside him. And they made reply, O Saleh, our hopes were fixed on thee until now. Forbiddest thou us to worship that which our fathers worshipped. Truly we misdoubt that were unto thou callest as suspicious. See Al Quran, six, Surah 11, 61, 62, Ayat Um. All this proved fruitless until at last there went up a great cry and a fell under utter, uh, utter perdition. Later, the beauty of the countenance of the friend of God, you know, title for Abraham, appeared from behind the veil, and another standard of divine guidance was hoisted. He invited the people of the earth to the light of righteousness. The more passionately he exhorted them, the fiercer waxed the envy and waywardness of the people, except those who wholly detached themselves from all save God, and ascended on the wings of certainty to the station which God hath exalted beyond the comprehension of men. It is well known what a host of enemies besieged him, until at last the fires of envy and rebellion were kindled against him. And after the episode of the fire came to pass, he, the lamp of God amongst men, was, as recorded in all books and chronicles, expelled from his city. And when his day was ended, there came the turn of Moses, armed with the rod of celestial dominion, adorned with the white hand of divine knowledge, and proceeding from the Paran of the love of God. It's a biblical name for a hill outside of Mecca in the Hagrite territory and wielding the serpent of power, 
and everlasting majesty. So Athen Lagos, as we've talked about in the Gnostic programs, he shone forth from the Sinai of light upon the world. He summoned all the peoples and kindreds of the earth to the kingdom of eternity and invited them to partake the fruit of the tree of faithfulness. Surely you are aware of the fierce opposition of Pharaoh and his people and the stones of idle fancy which the hands of infidels cast upon that blessed tree, so much so that Pharaoh and his people finally arose and exerted their utmost endeavor to extinguish with the waters of falsehood and denial the fire of that sacred tree, oblivious of the truth that no earthly water can quench the flame of divine wisdom, nor mortal blasts extinguish the lamp of everlasting dominion. Nay, rather, such water cannot but intensify the burning of the flame and blasts, and such blasts cannot but ensure the preservation of the lamp. Were ye, were ye to observe with the eye of discernment and walk in the way of God's holy will, and pleasure, how well hath the believer of the kindred of Pharaoh, whose story is recounted by the all-glorious in his book, revealed unto his beloved one, observed. And a man of the family of Pharaoh, who was a believer and concealed his faith, said, Will you slay a man because he saith, My Lord is God, and when he hath already come to you with signs from your Lord? If he be a liar, on him will be his lie. But if he be a man of truth, part of what he threateneth will fall upon you. In truth, God guideth not him who is a transgressor, a liar. See Surah 40, Ayat 28 of Al-Quran. Finally, so great was their iniquity that this same self-believer was put to a shameful death. The curse of God be upon the people of tyranny. See Al-Quran, Surah 11, Ayat 21. And now ponder upon these things. What could have caused such contention and conflict? Why is it that the advent of every true manifestation of God, the whole universe is supposed to manifest God because it's the creation, right? Hath been accomplished, had been accompanied by such strife and tumult, by such tyranny and upheaval. This notwithstanding the fact that all the prophets of God, whenever made manifest unto the peoples of the world, have invariably foretold the coming of yet another prophet after them. and have established such signs as would herald the advent of the future dispensation. And such was it said with the Quran, although some of the stuff about the seal of the prophets was believed to be some Arabian prophet. A lot of the Jews believe that. Uh, some of the Christians believe that. Um, you know, they, they replaced with the Pope doctrines and the... Uh, False, the many false prophets that have led churches, but um, it wasn't that they all was like, oh, it's, it's just going to continue forever. And what if what if there's a scripture that's what if there's enough revelation or enough inspiration, or hopefully and right, um, preserved from one of the dispensations. And dispensations more in time, uh, terms of time and space, rather than, oh, well, these are ethics we're going to put aside. You know, that's not really how it works. And to this, the records of all sacred books bear witness. Why, then, is that, despite the, manifesta the expectation of men in their quest for manifestations, uh, in their quest of the manifestations of holiness, and in spite of the signs recorded in the sacred books, such acts of violence of oppression and cruelty should have been perpetrated in every age and cycle against the prophets and chosen ones of God, even as he hath revealed, as oft as an apostle cometh unto you with that which your souls desire not, ye swell with pride, accusing some of being impostors and slaying others. See Surah 2, A. 87 of Al Quran. Reflect what could have been the motive for such deeds. What could have prompted such behavior towards the revealers of the beauty of the all-glorious. Whatever in days gone by hath been the cause of the denial and opposition of those people hath now led to the perversity of the people of this age to maintain that testimony of providence was incomplete, that it hath therefore 
then the cause of the denial of the people is but open blasphemy. How far from the grace of the all-bountiful and from his loving providence and tender mercies it is to single out a soul from amongst all men for the guidance of his creatures, and on one hand to withhold from him the full measure of his divine testimony, and on the other inflict severe retribution on his people for having turned away from his chosen one. Nay, the, manifest, the manifold bounties of the Lord of all beings have at all times through the manifestations of his divine essence encompassed the earth and all that dwell therein. Not for a moment hath his grace been withheld, nor have the showers of his loving kindness ceased to rain upon mankind. Consequently, such behavior can be attributed to not save petty-mindedness of such souls as tread the valley of arrogance and pride, are lost in the wilds of remoteness, walk in the ways of their idle fancy, and follow the dictates of the leaders of their faith. You know, when new faiths are kind of derived out of things. Their chief concern is mere opposition. What do you think Protestant means, you know? Their sole desire is to ignore the truth. Unto every discerning observer, it is evident and manifest that had these people in the days of each of the manifestations of the Son of Truth sanctified their eyes, their ears, and their hearts from whatever they had seen, heard, and felt, they surely would not have been deprived of beholding the beauty of God, and are strayed far from the habitations of glory. But having weighed the testimony of God by the standard of their own knowledge, gleaned from the teachings of the leaders of their faith, and found it at variance with their limited understanding, they arose to perpetuate such unseemly acts. Leaders of religion in every age have hindered their people from attaining the shores of eternal salvation, inasmuch as they held the reins of authority in their mighty grasp, some for the lust of leadership, others through want of knowledge and understanding, have been the cause of the deprivation of the people by their sanction and authority. Every prophet of God hath been drunk from the chalice, uh, from the chalice of sacrifice. Well, they weren't blood drinkers, but hopefully you know what I mean, uh, what, they, what he means. Um, and winged his flight unto the heights of glory. What unspeakable cruelties they that have occupied the seats of authority and learning have afflicted upon the true monarchs of the world, those gems of divine virtue, content with a transitory dominion. They have deprived themselves of an everlasting sovereignty. Thus their eyes beheld not the light of their countenance, of the countenance of the well-beloved, nor did their ears hearken unto the sweet melodies of the bird of desire. While they listened, but they directed their desires towards what was lawful. Um, and they didn't justify things just because they desired it. Like liberal what might, or conservative might say, well, the other people have wanted this, and this has been, you know, there's tradition about this, so. Um, I'm using words for what they really mean. You can't use hate speech. But God's grace has been that everybody has at least the opportunity they need to su succeed spiritually. Um, some people may die in poverty because, well, they may die in poverty. But often that's because there's some wealth distribution problems. For this reason, in all sacred books, mention hath been made of the divines of every age. Thus he saith, O people of the book, why disbelieve the signs of God to which ye yourselves have been witnesses? See Al Quran, Surah 3, Ayat 70. And also he saith, O people of the book, why clothe ye the truth with falsehood? Why wittingly hide the truth? See Surah 3, Ayat 71 of Al Quran. Again he saith, Say, O people of the book, why repel believers from the way of God? See Sir 3, 8, 99. It is evident that by the people of the book who have repelled their fellow men from the straight path of God is meant none other than the divines of that age whose names and character have been revealed in the sacred books and alluded to in the verses and traditions recorded therein. Were you to observe with the eyes of God? 
And I'm, I'm not saying that nothing remains of these revelations and these inspirations. And by that, I'm also mean the sacred history of all oh, this event and the inspired acts. Are it's going to be included in some of those events, right? Um, but with a certain spiritual awareness, we can look at these books and realize some of the truth. Uh, the, the Bible, we don't know what's revelation, what's inspiration, what's sacred history, what's the ter words of the scholars, what's been uh, changed from what has been truthfully passed on and various things. But, you know, a lot of the good Christians, for example, won't follow some of the bad stuff, or won't believe in that, but... Well, there's more to it. But, With fixed eyes and steady gaze, born of unerring, of the unerring eye of God, scan for a while the horizon of a divine knowledge and contemplate those words of perfection, which the eternity hath revealed, that happily the mysteries of divine wisdom, hidden ere now beneath the veil of glory and treasured within the tabernacle of his grace, may be made manifest unto you. The denials and protestations and and protestations of these leaders of religion have, in the main, been due to their lack of knowledge and understanding. Those words uttered by the revealers of the beauty of the one true God, settling forth manifestations that should herald the event of the manifestation to come, they never understood nor fathomed. Hence, they raised the standard of revolt and stirred up mischief and sedition. It is obvious and manifest that the true meaning of the utterances of the birds of eternity is revealed to none except those that manifest the eternal being and the melodies of the nightingale of holiness can reach no ear save that of the denizens of the everlasting realm. The copt of tyranny can never partake of the cup touched by the lips of the sept of justice, and the pharaoh of unbelief can never hope to recognize the hand of the Moses of truth, even as he saith, none knoweth the meanings thereof except God, and them that are well grounded in knowledge. And I believe Surah 3, 8, 7 has more to it than that. Um, I think, yeah, that's, that's a bigger verse, but that's the part people quote most. Um, isn't it? Or is it verse 6 or 9 or something? Um, that I'm thinking of with it. Um, yeah, I, th I think 7. Yeah. And yet, they have sought the interpretation of the book from those that are wrapped in veils and have refused to seek enlightenment from the foundation of knowledge. And when the days of Moses were ended and the light of Jesus shining forth from the day spring of the Spirit encompassed the world and the people of Israel, you know, not, not this modern Zionist state, but um, arose in protest against him. They had clamored that he whose advent the Bible had foretold must needs promulgate and fulfill the laws of Moses. Not, ha not having too much fortune with the bugs here. And fulfill the laws of Moses. Whereas the youthful Nazarene who laid claim to the station of the divine Messiah had annulled the law of a divorce and the Sabbath day the most weighty of all the laws of Moses. Actually, no. Paroch say means that he came not to do, undo any of the law. Now, certain extremisms that had existed among the conservatives, fine, but not the laws of Moses. He was meant to refurbish it. Moreover, what are the signs of the manifestation yet to come? These people of Israel are even unto the present day still expecting the, that manifestation which the Bible hath foretold. How many manifestations of holiness, how many revealers of the light everlasting have appeared since the time of Moses? Yet Israel, wrapped in the densest veils of satanic, fan a satanic fancy and false imaginings, is still expectant that the idol of her own handiwork will appear with such signs as she herself hath conceived. Thus hath God laid hold of them for their sins, hath extinguished in them the spirit of faith, and tormented them with the flames of the nethermost fire. And this... For no other reason 
except that Israel refused to apprehend the meaning of such words as have been revealed in the Bible concerning the signs of the coming revelation, as she never grasped their true significance, and to outward seeming such events never came to pass. She, therefore, was re remained deprived of recognizing the beauty of Jesus, out of beholding the face of God, and they still await his coming. From time immemorial, even unto this day, all kindreds of peoples of the earth have clung to such fanciful and unseemly thoughts, and thus have deprived themselves of the clear water streaming from the springs of purity and holiness. In unfolding these mysteries we have in our former tablets, which were addressed to a friend in the melodious language of his jaws, cited a few of the verses revealed unto the prophets of old, and now responding to your quest, we again shall cite in these pages the same verses uttered this time in the wondrous accents of Iraq, that happily the sore a thirst in the wilds of remoteness may attain unto the ocean of the divine presence, that they that languish in the wastes of separation be led unto the home of eternal reunion. Thus the mists of error may be dispelled, and all, and the all resplendent light a divine guidance dawn forth above the horizon of human hearts. In God we put our trust, and to Him we cry for help. That happily there may fall, there may flow from this pen that which shall quicken the souls of men, that they may all arise from their beds of heedlessness and hearken unto the rustling of the leaves of paradise from the tree which the hand of divine power hath by the permission of God planted in the ridbon of the all-glorious.